Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about how to start focus in a search box when a form opens. We got a continuous form, right? And we got a little search box up here in the header. Well, how do you get it to start there? Today's question comes from Warren in Syracuse, New York, one of my platinum members. Warren says, I have a continuous form that lists my customers, and I added a search box in the form header to help find records quickly. I'd like the cursor to automatically start in that search box when the form opens, so users can just start typing right away. I can't figure out how to get it to start in the header section. It just wants to go right to the first field in the detail section. Well, Warren, this is really simple to do, but it does involve one line of VBA code. The important thing is knowing where to put that code. So first, a few prerequisites. First off, for this example, a simple search box like this, I like using a form filter. So if you want to learn more about filters, go watch this video. This will involve a tiny bit of VBA, so go watch my intro to VBA video. If you've never done any VBA before, this will get you started. Now there are some events that fire when forms open. There's on open, on load, on current. This video explains those events and the differences. We're just gonna use one of them today, but this is a good video to give you a broad overview of them. And as a bonus, I'll show you how I would put together a simple search box like this. I'd use the after update event, and then we'll set up a simple filter using a wildcard search. And make sure you understand concatenation and how double, double quotes work. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those and come on back. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to, in addition to all the videos where I explain how I build this. And in here, I've got a customer list form that lists all the customers. Then you can double click on one of them over here and that'll open up that customer specifically. But what if you got a few thousand customers in here and you want to whittle that down? Well, that's where you could put a search box up top. Now, I've got about 15 videos on my website teaching you how to make all kinds of different search options and boxes and combo boxes and text boxes and all kinds of different ways. But I'm just going to do one simple one here for today's video. All right, in design view, I'm going to make the header a little bit bigger. We're going to move all these labels down like that. So we got room for a text box right there. I'm just going to copy one of them. We'll just make it based on last name. So I'm going to copy last name, copy, and then paste it up here in the form header. Slide it over top of that one. And you can put a label over here next to it if you want to. That's up to you. Now, open up this guy. Open up his properties. Double click. It's text 20. I don't want to call it text 20. I'm going to call this last name filter. And I'm gonna get rid of that control source right there. I want this to be unbound, right? Control source means it's bound to the table. And if you put data in here, it'll actually save it in that field. I don't want that. I wanna just put a value in here and deal with it myself. All right, now a real quick way to filter the results is to go into the events, use an after update event, right? Dot, 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 that'll bring up your code builder. And in here, I'm going to say me.filter, that's the filter property of the current form, that's me, equals, and then what do you want it to be? Well, we'll say last name, like, and then we need double quotes inside the string, an asterisk for the wildcard character, close that string, concatenate, last name, filter, that's the name of my filter field, right? We just created that, that's what we're working with, and and then open another string, wildcard character, double quotes, and then close that string. See how that works? So this will basically turn into last name like, you know, and then whatever you want, like RIC for Richard. That will become what's inside of here. But that quote turns into these double quotes, right? Then you got your star, then whatever's in the filter box, then a star, and then the double quotes inside the next string and then that closes the string. I know it's confusing, but that's how it works. I don't like using single quotes, whole different videos on why. I'll put a link to that down below. Now, once you've done that, once you've set the filter, you just say me.filter on equals true and you're done. That's a nice, simple one field filter. Save it. I'm gonna come up top here. We're gonna debug compile once in a while, make sure my code's good. All right, we can close the code editor, close it. Close it, save it if you need to. Now when we open it up, notice my focus is over here 
and that auto number field, which is exactly what Warren's trying to get around. He wants the focus to start there so his users don't have to click on it. You can hit like shift tab or whatever to move between or control shift tab or one, I don't know, one of those key, key characters. But we want the focus to start right here. And now if I type in, let's say PI and hit tab, the after update event kicks in and it, and it filters this accordingly. So that works. But when I open the form, I want the focus to start here. All right, so for that, we're gonna use the set focus method in the form load or form open events. Okay, so we're gonna right click, go to design view, find the forms properties, double click right there on that box. It brings up the property sheet for the form. Go to events. Now this will work either in the on load or in the on open event. Either one's fine, on load's easier. It's right up there, dot, dot, dot. And in here, all we're gonna say is last name filter dot set focus. Okay, and I got a whole separate video on set focus as well. I'll put a link to that down below too. There's lots you can do with set focus. But set focus will basically move to whatever control you've got specified right here. All right, again, save it, debug, compile once in a while. And yes, that's on a t-shirt in my store. <laughs> Close it, save it, open it. And now you're sitting right there in that box, ready to type, R-O, boom, there you go. See, nice and simple. And now that's one less thing you have to hear your users complain about. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Hey, while I got your attention, click on that like and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Okay, it helps me out. And now for regular viewers of my channel, I just wanna let you know, yes, tomorrow we'll be getting back into the fitness database series. I've had a couple weeks off due to some uh, uh, health issues myself. I've been going through some dental work and it's been a nightmare. I posted about it on my website. Check it out in my captain's log. But I just want to let everybody know, yes, we're getting back to this starting tomorrow. But that's it for today. Nice quick one for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.